So the magic circle. It is something very prominent in modern ritualistic magic based on um, ancient traditions and the grimoires of medieval, medieval times. Mostly all magic is performed within the magic circle. This is not necessarily a necessary. <laughs> necessarily necessary. Um, as you will find with like, the Avermelon system, there is no magic circle. Uh, so, in that respect, really it is the mind. The, the magic circle is intended to be like a microcosm of the universe, um, of which it can be very helpful for someone using ritualistic magic or someone uh, new to the metaphysical systems. Uh, the physical boundaries are made in various ways. Uh, it can be circles of stones or even trees, which is usually for outdoor outdoor magic. The medieval grimoires and magical notebooks even recommended circles of flour and salt to be traced on the ground. These wizards often work indoors in the wizard's towers or in chambers, dungeons, things of that nature. Uh, the purpose of the magical circle, as defined by ritualistic and ceremonial magic, is to keep the energies within the circle inside and then keep the energies outside outside. Uh, the magic circle when um, active in magic is called the nematon. Nematon. M-E-M-E-T-O-N. Nematon. This area should be used only for magical workings and occult studies. If you can reserve an area of your house or have an area on your property or a favored place in nature where you can visit regularly, all the better. The location of that is completely up to you. Um, like I say, sorcerers in medieval times, they dedicate entire rooms to it and towers, dungeons. Um, obviously, someone dealing more with nature magic will prefer a place outdoors. Um, but sometimes you just need to be able to create sacred space around you, wherever you are, to be able to conduct um, work. Um, the bedroom can be ideal when just starting out, absolutely as well as, you know, a backyard, even if it isn't very rural. Um, and the size of your nematon is going to greatly depend on the number of participants that you tend to have involved. A solitary practitioner can easily use their own height, usually about six feet or so, five, six feet, um, as, a, as a diameter. Um, for groups, uh, you usually want to add about a foot or so from that six feet um, for each participant in addition um, just to make sure you're spread out yet still close closely knit to keep the energy tight um, in case you're using things like cones of power and stuff like that um, and according to lore once the circle is cast you don't want to break it or leave it and um, it's interesting because some people when we talk about this circle um, some people think of it as a uh, space in which they call things into it, and a lot of times the magic scrying mirror or the physical apparition of a spirit or something in some of those versions of magic, they actually um, occur outside the circle, directly outside the circle. So a lot of times the medieval sorcerers and wizards would um, use the protective circle to protect their own psyche and subconscious from the very forces that they were um, evoking. Um, and if such is the case, you may actually want to take some serious thought into the operation that you're doing. So.